Hi, I'm Zach, known also as AVNJ. I'm an ichthyologist and I've been studying fish for years. And in that time, I've caught over 350 different species of fish in different ecosystems, different environments, with a variety of different techniques in different states and even other countries. For the most part, I'm self-taught and all the dozens of techniques that I came to use were created through countless hours of trial and error. So to save you that trouble, I've compiled everything you could possibly want to know about using a handheld net, including how to pick the perfect dip net, how to know where to dip net, how to properly target any species that you could ever want to catch. Let's get into it. First, let's answer some basic questions so everyone is on the same level of skill. If you're looking for just the techniques or something specific, the timestamps for where to find those are on screen now. The first question is, what is dip netting? Dip netting involves a handheld net, often shaped like a butterfly net, but intended for use in water. Dip nets come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but the main features are a handle and a head, where the head has a mesh net to catch the thing that you are swinging at. The next question is why dip net? Well, for one, people with opposition to hook and line fishing as they don't want to put a hook in a fish's mouth and drag it, uh, will find this method much more humane and unlikely to harm the fish when done right. When done poorly, of course, it can still harm the fish. Another reason is that dip netting, in my opinion, is the true fishing experience. You can catch any fish from any environment, but you're gonna have to get down and dirty and use a variety of techniques that you'll practice. It could take hours, sometimes even days for a difficult fish that's right in front of you. And that's what makes it fun and rewarding. Instead of your catch being reliant on the fish's willingness to bite, you're reliant on your own skill, speed, and precision. A better question is where can't you dip net? And the answer is just about nowhere. There are dozens of techniques and different ways to utilize a dip net, making it versatile enough to be useful in just about any water depth, shape, or speed. Of course, knowing exactly where in a water body to swing for your fish is a skill in itself, and we're gonna go over that. Just your average large lake is made up of many various ecosystems and distinct sections, and different techniques will be useful in each separate part of it. If you're looking to target something specific, check out the techniques part later in the video. There are many things to consider when buying a dip net. Trust me, I've been through probably a dozen brands in my time catching fish, and probably over 20 different nets. All of this trial and error so that I can tell you, go with Jonah's dip net. Jonah's Aquarium sends me free nets to try out. They sent me one about a year ago for the first time, and I've not used anything else since. Uh, I used to buy these Placino floating nets from Amazon, but the handles were weak, and any significant flow or strong force, and this would just snap, break them instantly. I went through one of those probably every two weeks or so. Jonah's net, this is the one I was sent a year ago, which I've used probably thousands of times in six different states and hundreds of different water bodies and environments. Notice how it's still intact and how I'm still using it. I'll put the link in the description because if you're getting into dip netting, that's the only net that I would actually recommend. The first technique is called the spear, and it's great for catching fish that you can see in open water. All you do is use both hands to force the net under the fish and then lift up as fast as you can. The goal is to surround the fish with net and pull up faster than it can swim horizontally away from your net. While simple, this technique takes a lot of practice. Aiming perfectly under the fish and having the strength and dexterity to pull up quickly enough is pretty difficult. Don't be discouraged if you miss a lot. The one-handed spear is just a range modification of the spear technique. If you need to reach further than just a normal lunge, this technique is the way to go. It's good for fish that spook easily and won't let you get close enough to them to lunge at them normally. Be warned though, it's much more difficult. Aiming with one hand, lunging your body forward, and then still having the strength to pull up quickly enough is quite tough to do properly. However, if you can master this, basically any fish that'll chill in open water should be an easy target. This is called the dragon because you drag in. It's a technique usable from the shore or within the water. It starts like the spear technique by lunging the net into the water. However, unlike the spear, you're aiming past the fish with the net upside down. Then pull towards you along the bottom and up along the bank as fast as possible. Benefit of this technique is you don't need to see a fish. From the bank and murky water, you can still utilize this technique because if you do it fast enough, you'll catch almost any fish off guard. 
This technique, in my opinion, is down to net placement and movement of your feet. It is very useful for fish and shallow riffles that are often difficult to net, such as darters, dace, and trout. First, place the net below a set of rocks or leaf litter. Doing so in flowing water will lead to better results than still water, as the fish will be forced downstream by the current. Then, walk around the net, being careful not to disturb the area you're going to kick sane. Finally, Kick the rocks. Try not to step on the rocks, as you may smush an innocent bystander crayfish. Just shift all the rocks around slightly with your feet, guiding the fish towards the net, and simply lift and see what you ended up catching. The moving kick scene is by far the most intense netting technique that I will show you. If you're not fit, you will be by doing this often. The technique does amazing in flowing water with a variety of fish species. Essentially, the idea is the same as the kick scene. You're shifting rocks to coax fish into a downstream net. However, you're doing this while moving horizontally along the stream, covering as much ground as possible and also scaring the fish by dragging the net. First, you place the net behind you in the flow of the stream, but slightly in front of the direction you're heading horizontally. Make sure it touches the bottom. For every drag technique, the most important thing is that your net never leaves the bottom of the creek. This is why you need a strong dip net that can be dragged with all your force along rocks and gravel. Next, move horizontally, simultaneously shifting your feet to dislodge rocks as you drag your net which is doing the same. Cross the entire stream to the other bank, then quickly pull your net up. You might be shocked with how much you catch. Sometimes, fish will be in a place where you can't easily spear underneath them, such as on the bottom of the creek. For this type of situation, what you're going to want to do is exactly like the dragon, hold your net upside down, spear past the fish, then drag towards yourself. At the same time, however, move your foot towards the fish. This will get the fish to run from your foot and into the net. This technique requires both speed in both the spearing and the pulling up, but it's useful to know when you see a fish on the bottom that you want to get inside your net. In many locations, the best existing hiding spot for a fish may be under a large group of leaves. They collect at the bottom of streams or ponds, and lots of things will hide in them. What you do is pretty simple. Spear the net straight downwards into the leaf litter, then raise it slightly, move horizontally, and spear it down again. Repeat this process quickly across the area that you want to cover. You'll likely catch more leaves than fish with this technique, but if you dump those leaves out, you should find a good few hiders as well. Vegetation chasing is perfect for areas that have lots of thick vegetation, such as the edges of streams or still water. It's very efficient at catching the many species of fish which prefer to hide amongst the weeds. It starts just like a spear, into the vegetation, but instead of instantly pulling up, you keep advancing the spear with little forward spearing movements. Once you reach the end of the vegetation, pull up and see what hiders you ended up catching. I don't know why I come up with clever names. You're just scooping along the bank. It's, it's pretty simple. You can do it from the shore or in the water and will catch basically anything hiding in the vegetation along the bank. It's particularly effective in swampy, murky water where you won't be able to see fish and can work well with eels, suckers, and other bank preferring fish. Just spear downwards a bit away from the bank, then drag the net back into you up along the bank, shifting the net back and forth to coax anything hiding in the bank out. Finally, we have the classic dip netting method, the drag, essential for almost any fish. It's less efficient than the moving kick seine, and it covers less ground, but it is faster and generally more likely to catch a particular individual. However, you will look stupid to onlookers. The most important thing is never letting your dip net leave the stream bed. Place it down, hold the handle with both hands, and pull forward with all your might while moving through water like you were born in it. When you decide to pull the net up, it's up to you, wherever you think you've covered enough ground or maybe saw something enter the net. I use this technique more than basically any other, as it's pretty much the most versatile technique in existence. Thank you so much for watching the dip netting tutorial. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, I'll try to keep an eye on this video specifically and look at all the comments to make sure that I can answer any questions that anybody has about dip netting, because it is important that you get good at it and go catch the fish in your local area, post them to citizen science sites like iNaturalist and increase scientific data for the benefit of all human beings. Good luck.